Hey guys, Fake Rooster here and welcome to episode 2 of our Weapon History series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the FN Scar, predominantly focusing on the H variant, but we will talk about some of the other variants that you'll find, and we'll compare it to its Battlefield 4 counterpart. Starting with the complete origins of the weapon in terms of the manufacturer. So it's manufactured in Belgium by, and this is some French words so I might struggle here, Fabrique Nationale Herstal, or as I will call them for the rest of the video, FN Herstal. FN Herstal Armaments Company is the largest exporter of small arms in Europe. The group itself actually owns Winchester and Browning, and notably the company is recognised for its success of the SCAR, the P90 and the M2 Browning machine gun. The technical description that FN Herstal give the SCAR is the following. The FN SCAR H STD assault rifle is chambered in 7.62 by 5.1mm NATO or 3.08 Winchester caliber cartridges. It is available with barrels of various lengths. These barrels are interchangeable in less than 5 minutes. The FN SCAR H assault rifle can be fitted with a 40mm Mark II grenade launcher that quickly attaches to the lower rail of the rifle and for additional firepower a Mark III fire control unit that increases hit probability of 40mm grenades night and day. And I should say, just out of curiosity because I looked this up, SCAR stands for Special Forces Combat Assault Rifle. So it gives you an idea of what FN Herstal thought that the rifle would be best suited for or was designed for. In terms of operational use, the rifle was earmarked uh, for America. The US Special Operations Command issued a solicitation for the procurement of SOF Combat Assault Rifles, or SCAR, on October 15, 2003. The solicitation requested a new combat rifle specially tailored for the current and proposed future needs of the US Special Forces. The key idea of the SCAR rifle system is that it will provide the Special Forces operators with a wide variety of options, varying, of course, the barrel types as we talked about, from a CQC variation to a sniper variant and a marksman rifle. What's really interesting is the SCAR H was designed to accept 7.62 by 3.9 AK-47 and AKM magazines. The idea being that you could pick up enemy magazines and slot them into the weapon, therefore having an almost infinite supply of ammo when you're behind enemy lines. Starting in 2005, the first SCAR rifles went to end users in the US Special Operations Forces. Since the Navy uses a mark type designation, SCAR rifles were officially designated as 5.56 Rifle Mark 16 for the light variant and 7.62 Rifle Mark 17 for the heavy variant. It is believed that the Mark 16 and 17 rifles will gradually replace most rifle systems now in service with US SOCOM forces such as M4, M16, M14 and the Mark 25 sniper rifles. The rifle went into initial production in June of 2007 and of course was first fielded in 2009 with the US Army 75th Ranger Regiment being deployed forward with the SCAR. The SCAR H was adopted in larger numbers than the smaller caliber SCAR L and the SCAR H has been adopted by a variety of nations outside the US and is often employed as a designated marksman rifle. The features that come with the SCAR H or the features that it has built in are really, really interesting. Much of the rifle is very modular and can be adapted to suit different shooters. For example, it features a foldable stock that is fully adjustable for six different positions for length of pull and an adjustable two position cheek piece. Compare that to what we were talking about with the first edition of the L85 in the last episode. This is cutting edge technology. The weapon itself is completely ambidextrous. The charging handle can be on either side of the weapon, the selector switch can be engaged from both sides, and the magazine release can be used from either side as well. Magazines themselves drop free from the rifle. Now while the SCAR L didn't change the face of the rifle in the US military community, the SCAR H you're going to see a lot more front line as it has much higher stopping power and generally is a lot more popular, especially for its accuracy and how it performs. Over 20 countries in the world, uh, including police and military service, have adopted and used the FN SCAR. Of course, 
I will never get hands on with a scar in real life. What I can get hands on with is the scar in Battlefield 4. So generally, in terms of Battlefield 4, the scar H is an assault rifle, so only available to the assault class. It has a fire rate of 620 rounds per minute, which actually does fairly represent the real world weapon. The real world weapon has a rounds per minute of between 550 and 650, depending on the weapon configuration. In terms of muzzle velocity, um, in the game it's 500 meters a second. In real life, it's actually 700 meters a second. So the idea being, if you've got a higher muzzle velocity, my understanding is that, that it'll take less time for the bullet to travel so you can be more accurate on targets that are moving, for example. Now, the reason that I'd assume that they've lowered the game version of it is simply having a weapon that is as accurate as the SCAR H is in the game, combine that with a ridiculous muzzle velocity, there's no point in using other assault rifles. So I'd imagine for balance issues, they brought that muzzle velocity down a little bit. Um, the gun is accurately fitted with a 20 round magazine as well as per the real world weapon. SCAR H is actually my most used weapon in the game. Now I have tried to use every weapon for at least 500 kills because there's a little dog tank you get for doing that. So I've got a nice variety of guns that I've played with. However, the SCAR actually sits at about 1400 kills because of how much I love that weapon. Um, I did find the SCAR H in Battlefield 4 very challenging to use at first, but as soon as you learn its recoil and how hard it can hit an opponent, you can become really, really effective, especially in those mid to long range firefights. And I found it's very important to position yourself properly when you're approaching objectives or defending objectives. Basically, you need to reduce the amount of interaction you're going to have with somebody popping out with an SMG or an AEK that's just going to blow you away because of the faster fire rate. So you just have to handle things a little bit more carefully and specifically, which actually suits my playstyle very well. I like to think I'm quite methodical when it comes to attacking and defending objectives in Conquest. Now with the build that I use, I run a heavy barrel and an angled grip, which really lets you take advantage of the accuracy of the weapon. And I would of course recommend using short bursts. With the limited amount of ammunition you have and the sheer power of each round, it sometimes doesn't take much to take a player down. So it's important to kind of conserve your ammo so that you're not surprised when you're trying to reload or something like that. I do feel that the weapon is really balanced and has, as I said, a bit of a strong learning curve, which is why often it's overlooked for the easier to handle and the higher rate of fire weapons like the AEK or the ACE-23. But once you've mastered the SCAR, you'll learn how to outplay people and the game does the SCAR complete justice, in my opinion, from what I've been reading about the real version, and it feels like an absolute powerhouse. So there we are, that's a little dive into the world of the SCAR weapon platform in real life and in Battlefield 4 as well. Let me know in the comments below if it's a gun you're thinking of using or a gun that you've used before that you really like. As I say, I do feel it's often overlooked, but give it a go, see how you get on. We've obviously got a lot of excitement in Battlefield just now with the 2042 reveal trailers you'll be surprised at how many people are playing Battlefield 4. So now is a great time to dive in and maybe give the Scar H a little go. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you didn't, leave me a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see improved in the future. Please subscribe for more, and I'm going to see you guys in the next video.